Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you all may have noticed, I changed my shirt from the last video. I was rocking the Donovan Mitchell jersey earlier, but I figured that that might not be appropriate because I'm talking about the Sixers. So I decided to put on a shirt repping my cross country team. Got the hat on too. So, um, yeah, we're talking about the Sixers off season preview. Uh, start off with Brett Brown. I think he has to be gone. I don't think he's a bad coach. However, this team has just underperformed for too long. And I think that they're going to want to make a change. And I think that they should make that change at, at the coaching helm before they make any big trades. So I expect him to get fired. I think uh, a good new option for them could be Dave Yeager because of... Um, I think he's just been successful. He was really good in Sacramento and just lost his job because of money stuff. And I'd like to see him. I also think Sam Cassell as a as the Clippers assistant coach, I think he could be a really good head coach as well. I know the Raptors and Bucks both have good assistant coaches that people have been looking at to take on head coaching jobs. Obviously, Tyron Liu and Jason Kidd have been in those kind of conversations as well. So we'll see. I'm not a real coaching expert at all, so I I don't really have a strong take there. Uh, in the draft, they have the 21st pick, the 34th pick, the 36th pick, the 49th pick, and the 58th pick. So yeah, a lot of draft picks. Um, with the 21st pick, I think that there's a few options they could go with. They could either take a point guard, a backup point guard, so someone like Trey Jones. Um, I think he'd be a nice, a nice pick in that area. However, um, I also think they can get a pretty solid backup point guard with one of their seconds. So here, I think they should focus on a three and D wing, and I think that Josh Green could be a pretty good fit for them. Um, obviously, like I said, it's a position of need they could really use um a wing and with how successful they were with viable this year i think that josh green could be kind of a similar player um he's a good defender obviously um and then obviously his shooting needs a bit of work uh but i've seen his stroke i watched a lot of film on him the past couple days or um i guess in the past day trying to get ready to make this video and I think that he's a good fit for them so if I had the 21st pick and I was in their situation if he's on the board I'd take him otherwise Tyrell Terry could be a nice fit for them as a a shooting point guard someone who can knock down jump shots and play the one however I have some questions about him when his frame and also his, his defense might not be very good so I think I think that the guy they should go with here is Josh Green. Cassius Stanley is another possibility as a um, wing. However, I think it might be a bit of a stretch to take him here. Robert Woodard's another option as a shooter, but I don't think his defense or ceiling are as high as Josh Green's. So I think Josh Green is um, would be a good pick here for them. Um, in the second round with those 34th, or 36th pick, I feel like they're definitely going to carry a couple of these picks because they don't have any need for all of them. Um, I think they should take a point guard, a backup point guard. And I think a guy like Malachi Flynn could be available. Um, Peyton Pritchard, Cassius Winston, Devon Dotson. There's lots of options. I'd say Flynn and Dotson are my favorite out of that group, so they should take one of those two, but... Um, it's a position that they need to address. They don't really have a, a point guard at all on their roster, aside from Ben Simmons, and they apparently want to play him at the four. But we'll see what happens with that, uh, what they decide they want to do with the new coach, if he wants to play Simmons at the one or the four. But all of this is assuming there will be a new coach. But I think that they should draft a backup point guard here. Um, and then... I think they'll probably trade a bunch of the other ones. Maybe um, they've got someone they like who they can take late in the second round with a 49 or 58, but it's hard to predict because there's a lot of guys that could go in that range. So, um, 
like trades. I think Tobias Harris is the least likely of their four um, big contracts to get traded just because uh, it's the biggest one, so it's going to be the hardest to trade. And he's also um, just a, he's, he's still a pretty good player, and I feel like they'll give him another shot. His contract also goes on the longest, so... Um, and he can be a good surrounding piece for Embiid and Simmons. He can knock down shots. Uh, he's not a great defender, which is something you'd kind of like to see. But um, I think they keep him around for another season. Al Horford, uh, he just doesn't look like a great player anymore. I was trying to think about potential fits, and the two teams I came to were the Rockets, just because he could maybe be a small ball center for them or the Hornets just because they have a lot of cap space and need a center. But I feel like, um, the Rockets, I tried to make some numbers work and it was kind of, it was not easy to get him onto their roster because they're, you have so much money going to Harden and Westbrook and the Hornets. Um, I'm not sure that they would give up any, they definitely wouldn't give up any assets, and they might require the Sixers to throw in maybe Zaire Smith. So, uh, they also, the Sixers would probably have to take back Nick Batum, I feel like, which wouldn't be terrible because it's an expiring, but, and Batum can also be a decent um, role player on the wing, so maybe that's a trade they could get done. Um, Definitely one I thought about a lot yesterday. I was trying to come up with some trade ideas for this section. Um, training Embiid and Simmons, I'd rather not. If I were the Sixers, I feel like you've got Embiid for three more seasons under contract, Simmons for five more seasons. So they've got time to figure it out. And um, I just feel like two guys with this much talent will figure it out. They just need a little more time. I know it's been three years and still no real results but they're stars and they're great players and you really don't want to trade away players of this level of talent unless you have to especially young players so I think they hang on to them and give them a little more time to try and gel and figure it out but maybe at the trade deadline if they're not looking good it's another story I think Josh Richardson is the most likely trade for them and um, one idea I came up with that I really like is a swap for Tim Hardaway because um, Josh Richardson will bring a bit more defense to the Mavs. Tim Hardaway will bring a bit more offense to the Sixers. So maybe it's a good win-now trade for both teams. And um, I I feel like uh, the both teams would probably do this. And I think it helps the Sixers in that they have a hard time getting buckets outside of their, well, in the playoffs outside of Embiid, it seemed like. And I think adding another scorer to this roster could really help. Uh, free agency outgoing, you've got Alec Burks, Glenn Robinson the third, and Raul Neto for their important guys. Um... I think Alec Burks looks like a really key component to this team as a scorer, and he might be kind of hard to replace his production off the bench. So they should try to retain him, but I feel like he might get an offer sheet that's a little too high. Otherwise, um, Glenn Robinson the third, kind of the same story. He's a good scoring wing off the bench. Both of those guys can play a little defense. Neto is a decent backup point guard option, and they could bring him back on the minimum, I think, but... Well, they want to. I'm not real sure. Um, their potential rotation next year, I think, is Shake at the point guard, Josh Richardson at the shooting guard, Tobias at the small forward, Ben Simmons at the power forward, and Embiid at center. Off the bench is Al Horford, Matisse Thibel. I've got Josh Green and Cassius Winston as the eighth and ninth men. Um, assuming those two could be guys they take in the draft, I think. I think Josh Green is a really good fit. Um, he can play in transition a bit. And he's a good shooter, like I said. I I just think this this is the right place for him to go. It's right around the right 
right spot for him to fall in the draft, and it's a position of need for the Sixers. They need wings. They also need a point guard, but like I said, I think they can get that later in the draft. And um, that's where Cassius Winston comes into play. He looks like he can be a decent backup point guard right away. And that rotation right there, that nine-man rotation, really doesn't seem to have any weak spots. Um, obviously, you're playing two rookies, which is a weak spot, so I shouldn't have said that. But um, I definitely feel like that's a team that could win a playoff series. Maybe they can figure out a trade. But if they don't, I feel like this team could be decent again. Or will be decent again. And will be a top five seed in the Eastern Conference. Or at least a top six seed. I don't see any team... Well, maybe the Nets will pass them. So maybe this is a bottom... 7 or 8 seed. And if that's the case, then maybe they should make a trade to shake it up. There's just so many questions around this team. So I think they start off by figuring it out by firing the coach, find their guy for the future, and then think about making a big blockbuster trade. So, yeah, um, disappointing season for Philly, but a lot of options for things they could do this offseason. Maybe they trade that pick also, but I feel like they selected Thibel last year. Um, two years ago, they took Shamit and Zaire Smith, although they traded. Or actually, they took Mikael Bridges and then traded down for Zaire Smith, which doesn't look so good anymore. But, um, yeah, lots of options for this team. Should be an interesting offseason for them. And ladies and gentlemen, I will talk to you very soon. Next video coming up shortly.